Hello friends, myself Santos. Uh, I have worked in uh, AX since last seven years. I, I am working in AX uh, technical. So I have introduced uh, our new functional Mr. P. Supra to show you something on functionality of AX in item master. Uh, uh, hello, Mr. P. Supra. Hi. Hi Santos. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for being a part of your channel. I have seen your uh, uh, channels and I find this are very interesting. As we know that a uh, lot of people create items from in uh, Dynamics AX but they don't know the basic concept of the product type, product subtypes. So I want to use some uh, light on this. What is the functionality of product types and product subtypes? Okay. Thanks for your question. What you are saying is really correct. We do mechanically creating the product type and product type type and we fill up some data and create the item but it will be better if you understand the concept of each of the fields that are available in AX 2012. First there are two ways of creating a product. One is from the product information management common all products. This is a navigation pin you are telling about the product information right? Correct. So if you go there are two options available. One is from the release of products you can create and then from all products and product masters. These are the two places where you will be able to create a product or a product master. Why it is called a release products in here? Because it's a finished goods or something like that? No, the idea of the release of product is in AX as we know we can configure multiple companies. Those are called as legal entities. Legal entities in the sense that these companies are legally bound by the laws which is applicable in that country. So they have to maintain all the accounts separately so that whatever the tax returns and whatever the returns they are giving to the government is being separated. So for that purpose legal entities are created and here the functionality is when you create a product or a product master from all products then you can transfer or you can release those product to the legal entities. The idea here is you create one identical product and then you can transfer it so that it will help you to transact these items within the legal entities as well as it will also avoid duplication. You don't need to create the same product again and again in multiple legal entities. Legal entity means you are indicating the companies, right? Exactly. That is the legal entity is a company. Yes. Okay. So you want to show with some, something about the product uh, uh, on release product, right? Yes, we can go to the release product and we will see how we are going to create a product. It is called, uh, I love section, it is called action pane. This is grid section and this is the your navigation pins, right? Exactly. This is the list page of the release of product of that legal entity USMF where it is listing out all the items which are available for this company. In the action plan if you find there are many say, uh, many tabs are there this, where actions are being done that is called an action plan. That's a top grid is called the action plan where we, we call it as the list this here we below all the list of the items are available this is called the list page of the item and then if you see right right side if you see some informations are available this is called the fact boxes and then of course left side if you see these are the navigation pans where you can move from one module to other module or if you can move to a favorite section so this is the thing these are showing the related information of item right exactly these fact are all related boxes. to the yes yes so just we are going to create an item master to show you some field like a product type. Okay. Product. Once you click the product new, it creates a wizard. This wizard opens with some options available as well as some data has to be filled up by manually. If you see certain fields are having the underlying red marks are there, it indicates that these are all mandatory to be filled up. Product number and item number all to be mandatory. At the same time, there are some options available where the product type is item or service. So it is a selection to be done by the user. Uh, if we create an item product type with the item or uh, product type service, what will impact on a transaction if we create? Basically, the products in 
In AX is being demarketed as two types. One is the item, another is the service. Item means that is a tangible item which is physically stored, which you can physically see, which you can physically transact. You can lift the item, see the item, you can handle the item. That is a physical item. So that is called an item. Whereas there are certain things which is also an item, but it is of type. Product type is service. To these services cannot be stored. That cannot be physically seen. Those services cannot be physically uh, transacted. So it is an intangible product. So items of tangible product, service is an intangible product. Okay. Here you also the product sub type is also available with product and product market. Yes. Yes. Now for give an example for the item or the service. I just come back to the product uh, subsequently, item or service. Mm -hmm. What I can say is for an example of a service is like if somebody is doing a consultation, mm -hmm. then it is called like a service. So okay. it's not a it's not an item which is, can be stored. So basically a service item will not have any stored uh, storing capacity. You cannot keep that in a warehouse as a stock. So that's the basic thing they want to create. Right? Coming back to the question of the product subtype. Mm -hmm. So we will create a first item mm -hmm. and then we will have a subtype called a product. Or we, if you find there is another option available, that's a product subtype. Okay. A product is one which don't have any dimensions. Okay. It is not having any dimensions as such. But whereas, whereas a product master is one which is having some dimensions. So what do you mean by dimensions? So dimension is, for example, it will have an uniqueness in terms of its style, size, color. So these are the these are the attributes which can be attached to a product master. Whereas a product is one which don't have any attributes attached to that. To give an example for a product master, say you can say that a shirt or a t-shirt where which is having a unique color will be there or it will have its own sizes like XX, medium or XL like that is having its own sizes and it may have some style also, some premium quality or like a lower quality, medium quality like that. So these are the styles like that. So if you want to configure an item mm -hmm. with multiple dimensions product dimensions then you have to go for an option for a product master or if you want to restrict without any dimensions then you can go for option of product okay so further we can go to further case now item master yes we can go for a product now then we will example in the we will go for a subsequently we will go for a product master now our example is for a product So if you see, once you create the product number, this product number is copied to the product name, search name, as well as the item number and the search name also. So if you see, there is a, there is a difference between a product as well as an item. Here in this way we are creating, system is copying the product number as item number. But we can always have a difference of change in the item number also. So I want to give an important uh, uh, input regarding the product number and the item number. Product, uh, as I have explained to you, any product which is created, it can be released and transacted between the legal entities. When um, a product is being transacted or released to other legal entities, what happens is the product number remains same across the legal entities. Okay. This is an important thing so that uh, they, whenever the transactions are happening between the legal entities in terms of uh, intercompany sale order, intercompany purchase order or any some other transactions are happening, system will identify that through the unique product number. Mm -hmm. But whereas item number is specific to that legal entity. Because this number, you can have item number, you can have different different item number for legal entity between legal entities. For, for example, the item may be called as item number P0001001 in legal entity A 
but whereas you can call the same item in legal entity B as X5235. Whereas in both these companies, legal entity A and legal entity B, the product number will remain same P00001001. So that is the difference between the product number as well as the item number. So we can change the item number, right? Actually, what happens is you can, whatever you want to create the item number or the product number, it remains same throughout the life of the item. This cannot be changed. Once you are fixing the for a particular item, if you are cha keeping, it becomes remaining same throughout the life. So in fact, yes. Okay. Let's go back to that uh, the, this wizard form. So a few more fields are also there. So now he will please create the uh, product to yes. He cannot create with one because if you create with one system will not allow you to say okay it's a unique. So product number remains unique for that okay. Okay. CW products. So CW product is a very important or a special function or you can say a specialized thing which is very very unique or very interesting to understand what is a CW product. What is a CW product actually? Well, I can say in certain real business scenarios where it happens, one item is having multiple unit of measurements. Then you can configure that as a CW product. Okay, we can do a letter also. We can do a letter, but before that, I want to explain you the feasibility. What is that CW? I want to explain you the mm -hmm. catch weight product. You may also ask me an item in the item. If so, everybody is having a knowledge in the X two thousand twelve, they will also see that system is having the sales unit, sales unit of measurement, purchase unit of measurement, as well as the inventory unit of measurement. All can be set. But that gives the relation fixed. For example, I can have a purchase unit of a box for an item as purchase unit of measurement and I can configure one box contains 10 pieces of item. So I will set a relation one box equal to 10 pieces. But throughout the life it remains the same. Always one box remains pieces in the case of a normal product where you are setting the relation between a purchase unit of measurement and the inventory unit of measure. The speciality of the catch weight is a bit different actually. For example, if I, for, if I want to explain you a bit further in the catch weight pro prospects, we are considering that we are in the food industry, the, uh, the client is in the food industry and he is also uh, purchasing and selling fish. So if you see the fish, the quantities can be defined as quantity as one, but each fish will have different weight. It could be of 200 grams one fish or it could be of 300 grams or it could be of 100 grams. There will be a difference in the, the, the measurement of units each, but that is also differing from item to item. You cannot, you cannot have a standard fixed ratio between two unit of measurements. It goes by a maximum minimum values. So that is where we use the catch weight. Another example if I want to tell you that's another example is like a diamond where the diamond is also goes by the weight as well as it also goes by each. So but each is not equal to this many grams. It is always it's changing. So that changing we have to give through a relation by giving a maximum this ranges from one each ranges from 100 to 110 grams or maybe it ranges from um, um, 200 to 210 grams like that we can fix a range, range of the another unit of measurement this is called the catch weight hope you are able to understand the catch weight concept so now Now, what we will do is we will also create that and there is another option also available in the administration 
where we want to apply the template the idea of creating a template here is when an item is created this item is also having you have to set up various parameters like item model group unit of measurement and item group so they various um, th these things are to be parameters are to be added to an item so it will be very difficult to make item by item you have to fix up these things instead you can use a template where you can uh, make a item copy it as a template and then apply the template for the new items it will be easier okay so these are property you are uh, you have already been shown showing there is very nice property you can understand from meter p subra uh, so we are stopping for uh, property for this part we will show the other properties of item master in other part so thanks for watching this uh, clip and we will meet again in your uh, second part of this item master uh, thank you santosh and we will go have a detailed discussion on once the item is created okay thank you